Well, um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, I know this is a, a time when a lot of people are away from uh, ITU or they're busy, so it's, uh, it's good to have such a nice turnout today. Um, so for those who don't know me, I'm uh, Rob Clark, uh, and this is uh, Xiaoya Yang, who works in accessibility in TSB, and Jacques Salvador, I'll introduce more in a, in a moment. Okay, the, uh, the agenda, it'll take about uh, half an hour to 45 minutes to go through this today. Uh, we'll talk initially, Xiaoya is going to introduce the, the big picture ideas about accessibility and what it means within ITU. I'll then look in a little more detail at document accessibility in particular uh, for people with visual impairments, uh, the guiding principles and where we can find a little more information. Then uh, Jacques is going to give us a demonstration of um, his experience as a blind man using um, uh, accessing our documents through the websites and uh, looking within the Word files, uh, what kind of experiences he has and what experiences he's had uh, outside um, ITU. Um, please feel free, if we miss anything as we go through, please feel free to, uh, to jump in and ask questions. Or at the end, we can, uh, we can have a broader discussion about uh, um, what we've seen, about the subject in general, and particularly about what steps we could take uh, next. Uh, and throughout, I just uh, remind you that uh, we have no answers yet. Uh, this is very early in the, uh, in the process. This is really just a, a way of... Um, raising awareness among staff and raising difficult questions or easy questions about uh, what this is going to mean in the future. Uh, so, show you. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. I'm very happy that uh, we are joining here in this session uh, to talk about accessibility. Um, I do not want to take too long before we hear the ex a, a interesting sharing of experience by Jacques. I just want to highlight that accessibility is a very important working area for the ITU. And uh, I just mentioned a few background. There is a United Nations Convention for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities adopted in 2005, where the accessibilities of ICTs are considered a very important means to get disabled people integrated into the society to be able to live independently. There is article of this convention for ICT accessibility, it's Article 9. Then uh, after WTSA 08 first adopt resolution 70 on accessibility, uh, ITUPP 2010 and uh, WTDC 2010 also adopt res relevant resolutions. And in, within the ITU staff, we have established an accessibility task force chaired by the Deputy Secretary General and we have also developed an accessibility policy, which was approved by uh, ITU Council 2013. And we have also developed an accessibility action plan for 2014, which was presented to the council this year and was approved. Um, Rob have already sent all these links to you in the, in the meeting invitation, so that's a very uh, in, uh, useful information if you are interested in more work with what we are doing within the ITU for accessibility. Um, document accessibility is one of those uh, tasks we planned to uh, progress this year in, in the action plan. Um, I also want to mention that Within the ITU, it is the ITU T sector who initiated work on ICT accessibility. We have a question four of study group two, which is on human factors, and we have question 26 of study group 16, which is accessibility to multimedia. So these two questions have already been working on uh, ICT accessibility since many years, which could be even dated back to the famous dot on the button five, which is an accessibility feature for blind people to, lo to locate their finger on the right button. This is many, many years ago, and there is also F-series recommendation proved by study group 16, which is the guideline for universal design in standards making process. 
uh, because of uh, we have two study groups working on this area, therefore we have a joint coordination activity on accessibility and human factors, which is uh, chaired by Madame uh, Andrea Sachs, which many of you have, might have already uh, met with. And she is a um, passionate, uh, committed evangelist for accessibility and within IT ITU. And uh, uh, she had made a great effort to making us be aware of this important subject. Um, also, I want to mention that uh, since uh, um, ever since 2006, 2007, we have been providing captioning service for uh, accessibility-related meetings, workshops, question four, uh, question 16, uh, question 26 meetings, and GCAHF meetings. We also provided captioning service for TSEC meetings starting uh, recently, which was followed then by uh, PP10 and uh, by for council. Now we also have captioning, which is very uh, well accepted by all the ITU membership. So that's uh, my, the, my first point. I want to say that accessibility is an important work. And the second point I want to say is that awareness is the most important first step before any deliberate action. Because without awareness, we do not have the same feeling. We, we just are not aware about those inaccessibilities. It's just too common for us, normal people. Therefore, sharing of experience, this kind of first-hand experience is very important to make people sympathetic and compassionate for this work. I would just want to share a little bit of my experience. Um, and uh, you might have heard that uh, Andrea uh, Alexander our colleague Alexander Gaspari has fallen um, sick leave. Uh, I think part of that is also due to the pressure of this work. There is intense pressure of this work because if you are not aware of all those specific needs, it's easy to get complaints afterwards. Although it's not personal, but uh, if you cannot handle it very well, it comes into person personal feelings. For example, um, once we organized a very nice reception on a loan during one of the IGF, which was everybody is satisfied. It was great, and, you know, nice food and beautiful tables. Everything was appreciated. But soon we heard that a person on wheelchair cannot come to this place which is the, just you know, the last drawback which ruined our perfect reception, <laughs> something like that. And also, um, for example, those kind of small things, if we do not pay attention, it gets easily slapped. For example, if we think that badges could be printed on double sides and can be printed in bigger fonts, it will facilitate many participants to recognize each other, and especially to not to embarrass women. Um, I just want to share, uh, before Jack coming to the document accessibility, uh, a last experience of myself about a remote participation experience of the GCAHF meeting, which was held on the 30th of May 2014, which is just um, two months ago. That meeting was organized in room L2. Uh, as usual, for this GCA meeting, we book caption service, which needs to be done like booking our interpretation. Uh, it's a, a process which needs to be started long enough, don't forget. And because we will have one deaf participant on site, so we need to contract a sign language interpreter for him also in advance. And uh, this lady is first time to ITU, so someone needs to uh, get her in from the re reception and uh, some introductions before to everybody in this room. And again, we have remote participation for this meeting. What's really uh, interesting, you know, or impressive of this meeting is we have three different kinds of um, challenging remote participants. One participant, remote, is deaf, 
and his sign language interpreter is also remote, was also remote. So there's like a three party. Uh, the meeting is in room L2, and that participant is in one city in, in the UK, and his sign language inter interpreter is an, in another city of the UK. Each of them at that time during the meeting had three screens in front of them. One is for remote participation tool, and the other one is for the captioning text, and the third one is for sign language uh, video conference between them two. Um, this is one, just one case, and adding to that, we have one blind remote participant who is using uh, screen readers, like Jack is going to show us. Therefore, because he cannot handle two audio streams at the same time, so he can only join their voice to the remote participation. He cannot use the uh, remote participation tool because he cannot read the remote participation screen and the text screen and the audio. Everything he's, he's relying on audio. And the third remote participant, which also challenged our remote participation because he's, he's a normal person, no disabilities in that sense, but he doesn't know how to use the chat pod of Adobe Connect. So every time when he needs the floor, he just started to interrupt everyone. Therefore, all of this are, 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 are need, need the, the, the awareness of the remote moderator, and the remote mo moderator needs to test with each of them and to make agreement with them that if you want to ask us a flaw, how will you do that? If you want to ask us a flaw, please do, you know, do this, and if you want to ask a flaw, please do that. And also the chairman have to normally you know, pause after each agenda item, say, Let's make sure if there's anyone asking the floor, which is not normally not the case if you have a normal meeting like like us, what we are doing now here. So, you know, after this, I'm just saying that it's very important that you have first-hand experience, you be, become aware. And therefore, I appreciate very much again for Rob and Jack for their effort and their initiative to organize this session. And I hope that all of us will benefit from the experience you are sharing with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Xiaoya. OK, so Xiaoya described the, uh, the bigger picture, the, the broader um, implementation of accessibility in the UN. And she also focused on one aspect of accessibility, which is people with hearing impairments. Uh, we're gonna look for the rest of the session at the other aspect, the other main aspect, which is people with visual impairments. Now, there are some source texts a little bit closer to home than the ones Shari described. There's the ITUT, uh, ITU accessibility plan that describes in very high level terms what we're trying to accomplish. And then in more detail, there are ITU accessibility guidelines, which try to go down into more uh, concrete examples what we, can, uh, what we can do. Now, the accessibility plan has lots of um, parts. The ones that apply to us most at the moment are firstly, uh, engagement with staff and raising awareness. So that's one of the reasons we're here today. Uh, another aspect is the accessibility of meeting documents. So that means both how you get access to the document through the website uh, and also what the content looks like uh, once, you, uh, once you open the Word file. Now, accessibility, as Xiaoyu mentioned, covers a lot of different groups and different needs. That includes um, physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairments. And we should try to bear that in mind uh, whenever we're trying to understand what this, this topic means. Okay, within the uh, accessibility guidelines, uh, there are several big ideas to put in place, and we should bear that in mind when we, uh, we watch Jacques' presentation. Um, the first is universal design. So in the past, there's been a tendency to do special applications for people with accessibility issues. But this guiding principle means that we should try and develop one tool, one website, one Word file that is properly accessible to everybody. And what often happens is that it meets the accessibility needs of individuals, but it's also useful for everybody else as well. 
The other aspect which is important to us is that this shouldn't overburden us as staff members. Um, the idea of reasonable accommodation means that we should do what we can with the resources available. Uh, within the resources available. Um, now, there are existing guidelines, generally best practice on the Microsoft site and things like this, but at the moment they don't really tell us what we should be doing day to day. And today's session is really about raising awareness of what issues there are that we could be addressing. Uh, and once we've done that, we can start developing guidelines, developing document templates that would help guide the work um, in the future. So, uh, Jacques, if I could hand over to you, maybe you could say a few words about uh, how you find ITU compared to other organizations and, and maybe give us a demonstration of browsing the web and uh, looking inside some Word files. Well, thank you for giving me the floor. Good afternoon. My name is Jacques Sardot. I'm a um, French national, French speaking, so that's why you uh, will hear some French accent while I'm speaking English. Anyway, uh, I'm an interpreter working with uh, French as an active language in English, Italian, Russian and Spanish. Um, I'm working as a freelance interpreter, including working for the ITU sometimes, from time to time. And um, for this I need to access documents. Uh, new technologies in ICT uh, was really a great hope for us because um, uh, when I started to work, uh, I basically had to work without documents because uh, the only thing we had with, was paper. So when documents started to be on the web and uh, there could be a paper le uh, paperless, that meant uh, that they were uh, becoming accessible for us. Um, unfortunately, uh, while uh, documents were becoming accessible, the resource and the websites to access them were becoming inaccessible. Um, I have to say, and uh, that will sound very sweet for you, that ITU is uh, the organization uh, that would say the most advanced uh, regarding accessibility. Because accessibility, what does that mean for us? That means jobs. That means uh, that uh, today uh, we're going to be able uh, to work to integrate a team, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's uh, the uh, interpretation teams, and uh, that means that we're going to be uh, to become more visible. You know, from time to time, people are used to saying, "Well, why should we uh, be concerned about accessibility since there are nobody who would be uh, benefiting?" It. And I would say this is a sort of vicious circle. If you don't offer accessibility, uh, you will not have people stepping in and uh, working. And uh, as you're going to work uh, with, uh, you're going to include uh, accessibility and uh, reasonable accommodation, I think that uh, uh, people with special needs and people with disabilities will, um, will come and step in, I will be more visible. Uh, this is what I'm trying to prove uh, while I'm working here with the ITU. Uh, in other organizations, to be uh, very quick, there is uh, nearly nothing existing at the moment. I used to be a permanent at the UN uh, in Nairobi, uh, in, the, um, in uh, Yunnan, as an interpreter. And uh, I, when, when I, I talked about the problems, I had nobody to talk to. Uh, my uh, direct supervisor said to me, well, uh, I'm sorry, there is nothing I can do. Uh, well, cope and manage by yourself. Um, I have a friend of mine who's also blind working in the French section of the uh, 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 translation uh, service of the uh, of UNOC here in Geneva, uh, having the same problem because they are redesigning all the docs control and uh, he see the stage where he is going to stop working because uh, he won't uh, be able to access the documents and the reference documents. So the situation is very serious. I'm very happy to be uh, and very honored to be invited here and very happy to, uh, sorry, <laughs> very happy to, uh, to, to, well, that 
accessibility is uh, one of your concern. You know, most of the time, uh, the most important thing is to talk together, and sometimes we can find easy solution because accessibility is benefiting everybody. You know, uh, even in I would say not in ICT, but in real life, not in virtual life. But you see, when you're making uh, an accessible ramp uh, for a wheelchair, you will realize that some uh, uh, people who are drawing a case or who are uh, just pushing a pram or a caddy or whatever uh, will use this ramp. So accessibility would benefit uh, everybody. And that's why universal design is very important, because universal design is um, means that uh, accessibility can uh, uh, go beyond uh, people with special needs. I am going to uh, go through the uh, demonstration right now. So I'm working here with um, a, a Mac computer, uh, simply because Apple were the first uh, to include accessibility in this concept of universal design. So that means that it's out of the box. Um, when you're you used to uh, buy a computer uh, working under Windows, for example, you had to buy uh, an, an accessibility uh, a software uh, which costed about three times the computer. Okay, because accessibility has a cost and this cost is most of the time born, born by the people uh, who, uh, by the users, uh, which is at some point not fair, not because the users don't have to pay, the users have to pay money like everybody else, but they don't have to pay for their disability. Okay, so what is very good is that this cost here is shared by uh, every uh, Apple computer user, and what is very good is so you get into a shop, you just uh, get the uh, uh, the right command, the accessibility system for visually impaired with Apple is called VoiceOver. Um, the most popular accessibility system for Windows is called JAWS, which is Job Access with Speech. And uh, you've got also Window Eyes, uh, but as I said, they are not included, so you've got to buy them over the uh, on the top of uh, your uh, this is what you're spending uh, for your computer and other softwares. Okay, so you just have to enter a, a command uh, which is available on all computers. It's also available on smartphones like uh, uh, in my case the iPhone for example. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm very happy because usually um, when we're doing a demo, it doesn't work. Now it works. That's very good. Uh, can I close this? Or you? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So now I am on a Word document. That was uh, so it's a, a, a plenary document with an agenda. So what is uh, VoiceOver or JAWS or whatever it is? What is uh, um, an accessibility system uh, for visually impaired made of. It's made of a speech synthesizer, which is um, a good thing, but sometimes not sufficient. In uh, my case, for example, working as an interpreter, uh, I cannot always use a, spe a speech synthesizer. Why? Because as I'm interpreting into French with a microphone open, uh, with uh, earphones on my head, uh, listening and working at the same time, there is no way for me to use a speech synthesizer. Uh, if uh, the microphone is open, I mean, the audience who listen to the uh, French channel would hear the uh, speech synthesizer, so it's not uh, what we want. And uh, I would be prevented from listening to what's happening. It's also not what we want. So what we're doing here, I'm, I'm using Braille, um, which is not incompatible. So there is a Braille display here connected by Bluetooth to the computer, uh, displaying what is on the screen at the moment. So, for example, so I will, I will stop the speech for one minute. Okay, so here I will, okay, let me see. Let me try to figure out what I am now. 
Okay. 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 So. Uh, approval of, uh, for example, I, I'm, I'm just uh, reading right here what I have under my finger. Approval, the uh, dry, new, revi new revised text um, referred to SG during app TD 117P, etc. P approval of uh, drive new revise, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, recommendations according to uh, resolution 1 TAP. Okay, so now, for example, if I want to open uh, the next document, which is uh, TD246P, okay, what I'll do, okay. all right, here we go. Okay, here I've got ouvrir. Okay, and now I'm uh, being taken to the website uh, where I will be able to find the uh, resource. Now, what happens with the website? Um, usually what you have, you have a global overview of the website just looking at your screen, which is not my case. In my case, I've got either the speech synthesizer that can read through the website. Uh, okay, if it wants to work, that would be great. Committed to connecting the world. What would you like to search for? Search. List seven elements. The two. General secret radio communication. Standardization. Okay, so just imagine that. Samantha. For a visually impaired person, being on a web page like this one is, when you get there for the first time, uh, like being in an, an, in an apartment that you don't know. Okay, so you are in an apartment and you don't know, you've got to look for the, uh, uh, maybe if you want to, uh, to, to, to make a cup of tea, you've got to find the kitchen, you've got to find the kitchen, then the kitchen sink, then the cupboard, then uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the kettle and everything to make your tea. So it takes obviously a lot of time so as you don't have an overview of the web page. Okay? So that makes uh, things difficult. Uh, it's a matter of time. So obviously um, uh, working uh, more or less on a regular basis for the ITU uh, being recruited by the interpretation services uh, of the ITU. I uh, have um, some experience already, so I visited already this website, so that would be easier for me to go through it and to find the document I need. But still, you will see that it I need List some time. Okay, two. so I'm going to try to open this document. About a 2T study groups, events, all groups, join a 2T standards, resources, workshops, regional press, fin the list, development. Please bear in mind that the nearest exit may be <coughs> behind you. A 2 telecom membership, fin the a 2T work program. You will skip navigation home. Okay. Comma, a 2 share, share, share on link, share via email. Work item, G9, staff approved on 2, issued from previous comma. Approval press tab. Type of work item. Recommendation. Version. New. Provisional name. G fast. Equivalent number. Tyrant. Timing. Tyrant. Lee Tyrant. Subject title. Fast access to summary. Recommendation. Comment. Tyrant. Base text. S. The blue. Comma. Column 1. TD 246 plan. Here we go. Ty Sal and Alok Jif. Comma. Findu Tableau. Contact S. The blue one. Le Brown. Colin one. Com editor. Findu Tableau. A two T A. Five reference. E. Generate A. Five drop. The blue one. Colin one. Le comma I E E eight hundred two point. Findu Tableau. Comma. Submit new A. Five ties. Comma P. First registration. Last update. List six A. Layman. Follow U S. Twitter. Facebook. You flip. Symbol two joints. Feedback. Contact us. Accessible. Findu list. Back to top. Okay, so I went too far. PDF tutorial, comma. Tie solid, submit, comma, IE. The blue. Generate A. 5 drive TD. Generated. A 2 TA. 5 reference. S. Findu tableau, comma editor. 
Lebrown. Diblu. One contact. S. Findu. Comma. Comma. Ty Salon A lock TD two hundred comma. TD two hundred forty six plan. Okay. A put set comma two hundred forty six plan. Draft new recommendation to two TG nine thousand seven international telecommunication U Francais. Okay, so we Element de formula introuvable. Characters. Mos. Leans. Tabos. Okay, so what I'm trying to find is if there is a heading for me to help. Sometimes it could be a good idea to classify actually this uh, kind of thing by headings because uh, heading is easy. But anyway, I'll. Side map. Okay. Column one. Com comma. The two T. Comma. SG fifth comma. Temporary documents. Meet Perlin. Two hundred recently posted. Search meeting document. Comma two hundred forty six plan. The two T S G fifteen. Study period. Meeting from two thousand fourteen to temporary document received on. Source editor related to quick access locked document restrict ties users comma two t available languages and four the blue five columns five lines okay here column two two columns to click on the selected format and language column four column five link to column one here column two format column three column four posted column three size Co column five link free column one here column two four columns to large here Link four Colin one English Colin two Word document Word two thousand ten. Okay, here we Acquire. go. Acquire Word document Word two thousand ten. So now I know that I'll be prompted for my uh, for entering my uh, ties uh, logging. Col Colin four Link five Colin one Colin Findu Tableau Top. So what I lines. I know that I'll have to to look for for um, a form to Tabos. to fill in. So. Leans. Tabos, lines, oh. tabos. I don't have it. What? Feet. Contact up. Copyright. Co top. Link up. Colin four. Colin three. Colin two. Word document. Word two thousand ten. Okay. Apuire. Word document. Word two thousand ten. Ah, maybe maybe because I entered the. Uh... A feature like effacer. Effacer. The blue. T13, SG15, 140,324 TD, PLEN, 0246 oh, exclamation point MSW, E, a feature dance fainter. A Puyro fit fainter, Tele Chargements, Pray, T13, SG15, 140,324 TD, PLEN, 024 out text edit, T13, SG15. So you realize how, how long it took me to get through these, uh, through these documents. That, what does that mean? That means that when I'm in the booth, I have already uh, um, a preparation uh, beforehand so that I can uh, obviously know where things are and obviously the uh, so that I wouldn't take uh, I've got already my documents classified I've, uh, I mean ideally I uh, I have had the, uh, the the agenda before and uh, I know, but, but sometimes in some organization, like in the UN, for example, you never know from uh, the morning to the afternoon where you're going to work. So you cannot access the agenda because you don't know the uh, meeting you're going to be assigned to. You see what I mean? And you cannot complain about that because if you complain about the lack of accessibility of the lack of accommodation regarding accessibility and so on so they say oh yes you're right uh, this is true we uh, uh, we we don't have any uh, we're not concerned enough uh, for accessibility so you cannot work for us you see so you uh, just have to keep silent about it otherwise you don't get the job okay but anyway here we open this document international study telecommunication Standardization sector study period 2000 English only. Nouvelle Lane original English. Okay, this is uh, I've got my document, question. so I can just uh, read it. So four. I've got I'm reading question uh, four slash 24. 15, 24 March 4 April 2014. TD um, source, TD source reporter, uh, reporter uh, G fast, etc. etc. Et now what what I can do, of course. Reading Braille is always slow, so if I have the possibility, see if I if I don't have uh, anybody, a colleague to disturb in the booth, if I'm alone in the booth, or if I uh, sometimes use the, the lunch break for that, or coffee breaks for that, I can just uh, have a quick reading uh, by uh, with the uh, speech synthesizer. So what you can do here, uh, I will 
uh, just go through the documents. You can maybe close your eyes and just listen to the documents and see how uh, you can uh, get the uh, you can let the information come to you. International Telecommunication Union Study Group 15 Telecommunication Standardization Sector Study Period 2013 to 2016 TD 246 Plan Slash 15 English Only Original English Question S 4 Slash 15 March 24th 4 April 2014 TD Source Rapporteur G Fast Title Draft New Recommendation to 2TG 9704 Approval 4 April 2014 Draft recommendation to 2 TG 9700 X G Fast PSD Fast access to subscriber terminals Fast power spectral density specification Summary Recommendation to 2 TG 9700 specifies power spectral density PSD Mask requirements for fast access to subscriber terminals Fast a set of tools to support reduction of the transmit PSD mask Profile control parameters that determine spectral content Including the allowable Tell me when you've had enough <laughs> Okay so uh, this is about it. I think that um, this is all I can show you today. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I'm pretty satisfied with the, uh, the, the, the job which is made. The, um, the document synchronization software uh, is uh, today, uh, unfortunately, not accessible. I hope that this problem will be addressed uh, because that would be obviously uh, a solution not to uh, uh, not to be compelled to navigate uh, uh, through a website, which, as you could see, takes time, which I'm very sorry about because I thought that it would be quicker. So I'm, uh, I was myself a little, a little bit put off. And uh, uh, but anyway, um, this to give you a rough idea of what we can do. Obviously, I'm at your disposal, uh, not as an expert, but as a user, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to test and better test and uh, uh, give some, opinion, uh, some opinions and debate and uh, everything. I'll be, uh, accessibility is my interest. Accessibility is, uh, well, is the way for me to have a job, to survive and uh, to earn my living, so uh, I'll be uh, ready to be uh, as, uh, as involved as I can actually with you, and thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Jacques. Do I need to uh, switch this off? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for that uh, very interesting uh, exploration of our websites and uh, giving us the experience of um, the frustrations of, of using our documents. Um, I'd like to put the uh, uh, I'd like to put out the uh, the floor now. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to put to Jack? Go ahead, thanks. Yeah. What about your um, interpreter colleagues who aren't um, blind? How do they feel about? having documents not on paper but uh, electronic because maybe if all of you had to access them electronically there'd be a simpler way of providing everybody with documents in advance so you wouldn't have to navigate like that so slowly okay that's a very good question actually because um, uh, some uh, colleagues uh, who love to work I would say the uh, older way and who consider that they cannot do uh, anything but with paper but some so some people felt uh, me demanding or asking for paperless documents uh, felt it as a and considered it as a, as a threat um, which is not by the way because uh, working uh, with the electronic documents doesn't prevent. Then it's the organization policy. You've got organizations like the IT or other organization, even uh, as I said, I worked for UNEP and UNON for some time. So UNON and UNEP work, I mean, they are UNEP by the way, so they have to work with paperless documents at some point, you know. So uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the people have to be aware that we are going towards uh, a work without uh, without paper anyway, but uh, some 
people in my profession feel it as a as a, as a threat. And uh, but you know the uh, some we were to some we we went to some some sort of absurd situations where interpreters demanded paper. Absolutely, they wanted to work on paper only. And when I was asking for some paperless documents, say, "Hey, man, I means uh, the the chief interpreter said that you uh, on, can can work with paper only." So, for example, what w when I was in the draft uh, in a in a drafting meeting, uh, I had some uh, so the the text which was being drafted was typed on the computer, pr printed on paper, brought to the booth. And I say, may I have, if I uh, give you a memory stick, may, may I have this uh, document on, a, or on my memory stick so I can access it? And I said, no, sorry, you can't. So, <laughs> you, you, you know, uh, this is definitely a burning issue. Uh, obviously, the uh, new generation understands that uh, we are going to a, a, a paperless uh, way of working and uh, things are getting smoother and, and, and easier. Thank you, Jacques. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Jose Maria. Hi, this is Jose Batanero. I'm, I'm from the uh, General Secretariat working on the accessibility policy. So maybe an, an overall uh, comment on, uh, maybe from, from your side, if you, how you feel that we are progressing, if you, if you see an improvement, uh, how our services in general, so you, you've mentioned today documents, but in general the idea is to make all our services to staff, delegates, uh, and to the general public accessible, how are our general services improving, and maybe from your side, suggestions that things you should you think we should be focusing immediately, so you mentioned, for instance, the, uh, the application to, to sync documents, so that we take note of that. Uh, maybe you have some ideas that we can incorporate uh, for, for future revisions of this plan. Well, thank you for the question. Um, you know, I find at the ITU, uh, well, I mean, uh, things go well, they go their way and they go smoothly uh, and uh, the, the, well, the best way to prove it is I'm here uh, to talk about that and I've been invited to talk about that and to talk about that I'm not the only one. So uh, this is a, a very good thing. And the other uh, good, um, good thing to mention is that uh, uh, RTU staff, for example, so security staff uh, is very helpful for mobility. Uh, for example, you know, it's, uh, mobility is, uh, is, a, is a real challenge, uh, and especially for an interpreter, because sometimes you're, as, you're assigned to a meeting in the morning, the meeting may change venue, may change room, because the room is not available in the afternoon, so you've got to go to another room, and uh, sometimes colleagues are not ready to help, or they just cannot do. I'm not. I'm not telling any judgment about that, but uh, this is. This may be the case. Not always. Some colleagues. Some colleagues show solidarity. Some other colleagues do not. And at the end of the day, uh, I would say they have the right. I mean, uh, they they have for uh, to do their job, and uh, if they don't, I mean, I, I'm. Sp I'm not the one who can uh, oblige them or compel them to uh, uh, solidarity. So this is something that we also have to bear in mind. Because one thing that I was told when I started to, uh, to express my desire of uh, uh, wanting to be an interpreter, and even when I started to be on the, uh, on the uh, freelance market uh, of interpretation, some, some, uh, some chief interpreter said to me, well, Holden, uh, I'm not going to recruit you because uh, that will be a burden for your, uh, for your colleagues. And I said, definitely not. I mean, I will do my very best not to be uh, a burden for my colleagues. Uh, and I think I'm pretty su successful in that. I mean, uh, uh, if you if you're hearing some colleagues, I mean, complaining about me being a burden because of disability or whatever, I mean, just send them to me. Um, 
so uh, well many many things can be uh, can 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 be improved uh, of course uh, but the the best way to do it is just to talk together because sometimes there are very simple things you know um, I had a problem uh, in New York because uh, I was uh, you may find it funny, but it's not funny at all. Uh, I was in the in 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 the wrong restroom. Uh, I was in ladies' room, and uh, a, a lady and they say, "What are you doing in the ladies' room?" So just to my, uh, uh, I'm just admiring the view through the window. Well, she didn't find it as a joke at all. She didn't find it funny at all. Uh, she filed a, comp uh, a complaint, and well, it finished well. But I said, well, I'm sorry, but the simplest thing to do is just to put uh, a, a braille label on the door, uh, um, men's or uh, ladies' restroom, and the problem will be definitely sorted out. Uh, okay, this is an extreme example, uh, but in, it may happen. Neither did it, by the way, in a uh, UN secretariat in New York. So uh, things go, uh, they also make progress. Um, accessibility on uh, uh, labeling the uh, elevators uh, buttons is also a good thing. I mean, uh, uh, so there are plenty of good things that we could do, uh, but uh, most of the time, good communication, um, being able to express needs without taking them for granted. Okay, uh, I'm not going to, s well, don't count on me, and don't count on me to say, okay, I will need, uh, you have to do this and this is my right. No way. Uh, I have special needs. Uh, I am perfectly aware that some of them uh, can be accommodated some of them can, cannot. I uh, promise I would continue to do with it. Uh, sometimes it may cause frustration. Uh, um, uh, this is part of the. Uh, this is part of my life. My life is made of uh, many frustrations, but I can live with it. And uh, I think that with go good communications, I mean, uh, uh, frustrations can easily fade away. Did I answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent, thank you. Any further questions? Okay, I see no hands. Um, I think that's probably a, a natural point to, to draw this session to an end. Um, I'd like to thank Jacques again for this um, fantastic opportunity to uh, um, experience what we do from the other side of the fence. Uh, I think it's been uh, very interesting. Um, if you're like me, it raises more questions than answers, and um, and that's really the next point, which is uh, uh, what are the next steps, and that is to to start gathering together what these questions are. You know, you may have seen things today that um, help you see the nature of the problem. So maybe you might have seen the nature of the solution as well, but not necessarily. Uh, so really, the aim of this uh, the session was to raise awareness, and I'd invite you, um, following on from this meeting, please get in touch either through me or through the accessibility team um, with your ideas, your observations about accessibility, about the types of problems we've got, uh, and just take part in the discussion about what we can do next. Uh, so in concrete terms, the, uh, the templates group is already trying to develop um, accessibility-based templates for our, all our Word files. And from my point of view, along with Xiaoya and the accessibility team, I'll be starting to put together guidelines which just gather best practice on what we can do to make life a little bit easier for people with visual impairments. Uh, so just to, to, to round off, I'd just like to say thank you once again to, to Jacques for his time and his insights. Thank you very much.